getting your feet barefoot on the ground too outside in the process of all that is going to get you that grounding because all this electricity and wireless and Bluetooth around us is causing these very harmful electromagnetic fields that are interrupting our own polarity and interrupting our ability to, to function at the cell level too. What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the Modern Man Podcast, where we are here to connect men in pursuit of their potential. Join us as we embrace discomfort, cultivate community, and put wind in each other's sails. Now, I encourage you to like, share, and subscribe to the podcast so you can take your growth to the next level. And fellas, don't forget to check out The Noble Knights, which is a community of men where you can find accountability and mentorship in order to achieve your goals. Join us and become a part of a community of like-minded men on a mission to improve themselves and elevate their capacity for life. And I'm excited to get some wind in our sails today. It is my pleasure to introduce out of South Florida, owner of Physical Evidence Chiropractic and seasoned chiropractic physician with a deep personal commitment to bio-optimization. It's a pleasure to have Dr. David Lippman on the podcast today. Dr. Lippman, thank you for taking the time. Thank you for having me, Ted. It's a pleasure, and I'm looking forward to our conversation. Absolutely. Absolutely. I am as well, and I know our, our audience will benefit so much from the, the wealth of knowledge and experience that you have and you can share. Uh, but I always love to give the floor to my guest initially off the bat so they can speak directly to the audience. While I can name the, the titles, the business, it doesn't show really the behind the scenes and the ropes, the pulley, the gears that make the person who they are. So I'd love to give you the microphone, give you the show. You can speak directly to the audience, introduce yourself, and we can jump into our conversation after. Great. Thanks, Ted. So my name is Dr. David Lippman. I'm the owner of Physical Evidence I'm Chiropractic, but we've recently, in the last couple of years, rebranded because we're really much more than chiropractic. We are a bio-optimization center. And I'll talk a little bit about what that means later. But I'd like to go back a little bit just into my own history to try to explain, like, how did I get to what I'm doing today? Because, you know, my life's journey was supposed to be going in a different direction. I was supposed to go into a family business. But there were certain things that happened when I was younger that I think, you know, molded me and, and forced me and propelled me into the direction I went. And the first thing it was is that when I was 10 years old, we had moved into a new neighborhood. And the neighborhood was a bit of a challenging environment. And even from the day I moved in, there was some you know, some issues that, you know, and I just, I didn't want to become a victim, you know, because I saw that the place that we're living was, it was a tough place in New York. And fortunately for me, there was a kid next door, a couple of years older than me, and his father was into martial arts. And he, you know, kind of inspired me to have this attitude about being strong, getting strong and being strong in life, because he was into the martial arts and also the philosophy of that. And it was very appealing to me at the time, you know, not to want to be victimized and the thought that I could be strong, you know, that, that was a pursuit. And he also talked about how food directly impacts our ability to be strong. So he actually inspired me to get off of um, Captain Crunch and Wonder Bread and Pop-Tarts, you know, the stuff my mom was putting in the house and actually eat real food. They had a butcher shop, so they had really great quality meats. And um, so that concept of exercising and feeding my body what it needed was something that started at that young age of 10. And it actually, fortunately for me, I, you know, I carried through into my teen years. And then the next thing that happened that was kind of formative is when I was 15, I had a motorcycle accident. It actually broke my neck in two places, which I didn't know at the time because I was more afraid of getting in trouble with my dad for being on the motorcycle that I wasn't supposed to be on and hanging out with the people I was supposed to be hanging out with than the fact that I got hurt. But by the time I was 19, I was in college, I was working a summer job, and there was this chiropractic student there, and he saw I was having trouble, and I didn't even know what a chiropractor was. I never heard of them. My folks didn't use them. My friends didn't use them. And so he got me to come into the clinic. He was a big guy. He was like 6'4", 240, um, looked like Clark Kent. You know, he wore a shirt and tie in the clinic, and it looked like he was going to rip that shirt open. A big S was going to be right there on his chest. He had hands like baseball gloves, Ted. It was just just huge guy. And um, anyway, he, he took x-rays and he showed me that I had broken my neck, you know, and I, I didn't even know it. So I was walking around for four years with, you know, having had a broken neck and then the drop down effect of that. But when this man gave me that first adjustment, 
it was transformative in my mind in that moment that somehow, and I didn't know why, because I didn't even know what a chiropractor was before this. I just knew that this was going to be my direction. You know, I had a multi-generational family business, plumbing manufacturing that my great grandfather started. My grandfather was in, my father was in, and I was being groomed to be the next one online. So I had to have that moment of truth where some unknown force in me is, is driving me into this new direction. And I had to tell my dad, and very fortunately, he was supportive of it and um, allowed me to have the freedom to really pursue what I think my life was supposed to be. So starting at that age of 10 of understanding that the body has to be strong and nutrition is such a big part of that. What we eat has to do with you know how we feel and how we function. And then finding a chiropractic, you know, healthcare prevention, uh, profession that is all about removing obstacles from the body so it can do its best healing. You know, nothing can heal the body like the body can. So fast forward that, you know, almost 40 years of doing this, and now all these other modalities have come out and these biohacks and things that we're now, you know, mainstream, we're able to implement this as part of a lifestyle and teach people how to do this stuff so they can not just manage the decline of their health and degeneration, but invest in the incline of their health and regeneration. So who says you can't get stronger as you get along? You know, I'm stronger now in my 60s than I was in my 20s. And so the ability to do that is possible. And it was so, um, you know, my message in growing up is after 40, it's all downhill. You know, my dad and their friends, they were in their 40s. I was like 16, 17, but I'd been working out. They're like, oh, I used to look like you when I was your age, but after 40, it's all downhill. I didn't want to buy into that back then. And certainly I'm 20 something years, you know, into realizing that it's not the truth. It's a choice but you do have to invest in it. And so that's kind of the message that I've had. And this is what I try to share with people because a lot of men in our situation, you're younger than me, they don't feel that same vitality, but it's absolutely possible. It just requires some knowledge and an investment and a, and a dedication. Yeah, no, absolutely. And that's so beautifully said. I had to write that down as a note. It's not the truth. It's a choice because I had the same story projected to me when I was in my 20s working out, just started. I was 135 pounds soaking wet. I was skinny when I graduated high school. And even through college, I started drinking, got a beer belly. And when I decided to pick up weights in my 20s, I remember someone in their 30s with a little bit of a gut says, oh, yeah, keep doing what you got to do. But when you hit 30, you'll have one of these guts. I'm glad to say I'm in my 30s. And right before hopping on here, walking to the bathroom, I could still see my abs. And I'm glad that you said that you're in your 60s because I didn't want to out you. Anybody watching on YouTube, if you guys are listening right now on one of your podcast apps, great. Thank you so much for listening. But I encourage you to go to YouTube and look at this man, Dr. David Lipton, because when he came on, I would have thought you were – 39, 40 years old, brother. So uh, what you're doing is working and you are a product of your product, which is something that we've spoken about here on the podcast. A lot of men look at, I, I want to optimize my, my activity. We talk a lot about the actions, the habits. I want to optimize my day, my workouts, my behaviors, but we don't talk too much about optimizing our health and our longevity. So for for the listeners and even for myself who is still ignorant on the details of this let's let's start with the basics on what is bio optimization and, and how can that help men achieve better health and, and even better longevity so the the question of bio optimization is something that i actually had to come up with myself because i was trying to understand what is it that we can do to get our body to do its best healing, its best regeneration. Again, the body has the power. But in this modern world, we have many things that create obstacles to that best functioning and also deficiencies because, I mean, as a quick example, the soil that, that we're doing our farming and getting our food from doesn't have the nutrients it did you know, 50 and 60 years ago. It's been so over farmed, not to mention the pesticides and fertilizers and all the things that they put in to try to make you know food that is freshly grown, let's say, on the west coast of the, the country, get over to the east coast of the country and, and still be ripe and, and not rotten. And those processes really, you know, kind of hurt us. So those things get into us. So there's, you know, sort of two parts to the bio-optimization. What it comes down to really is the health of the basic form of our function, and that is our cells. Every tissue, every system of our body has at its core its cell. And the energy production 
at that cell level is what drives that entire tissue and that entire part of the system of our body. Remember, our body's got this huge interactive self-regulating system and system of systems that are all based on each one of those cells, 30 to 50 trillion of them, functioning energetically at the highest level possible. So <clears throat> once I understood how these things in the environment, like free radicals, which are, are toxins that interfere with our ability to bring oxygen into our cells and make energy in what's called the mitochondria, where we make energy, that is a big um, proponent of healthy cells because it's, it's keeping that oxygen, which optimizes energy production from getting in. So a cell that's making energy that doesn't have oxygen because it's a free radical that's blocking it is only functioning at like two horsepower. But when oxygen is present, that cell is functioning at 34 horsepower. So the difference between walking around with two horsepower cells or 34 horsepower cells is really the difference of what makes you bio-optimized because so many people are walking around at two horsepower. So <laughs> that's one of the things I'm trying to, you know, get home is that whole concept at the cellular level. You know, Ted, we've had, a, we've identified over 32,000 diseases in the human body. And there's one common denominator, and that is in every single disease, there is a loss of cellular energy production in those cells and those tissues, which says to me that we don't have 32,000 diseases. We have 32,000 symptoms of the loss of energy production or bio-optimization at the cellular level. So that's to try to paint that broad picture and to really change the way you think about disease and being sick. I think that's the, the message that kind of hit me between the eyes when I heard that and realized the importance of doing things on a daily basis to optimize cell energy production. And yeah, obviously there's a lot of ways to do that, but let me give you a chance to jump in here. Yeah, no, fantastic. Cause I think you, you're taking us exactly where we're going to be going next in terms of, of how to tap into some of those strategies to unlock higher horsepower because I, I think a lot of the men listening and even the women who listen to the podcast, thank you to the ladies, by the way, but when we have a nutritious meal or when we're on our diet, we feel different versus when we have a weekend of eating pizza, maybe indulging and drinking. We just had, we're recording this right after Labor Day, so maybe some folks had some barbecue and some hot dogs. And then the next day or even the next few days, there's a lethargic feeling, almost like walking through molasses can't function as effectively. So even those small things can give us a hint as to how the diet and the food that we eat impacts our effectiveness and our outcome. And to break it down to a cellular level is, is really what a lot of our listeners looking, are looking for. They're looking for how do I optimize my day in, my day out, my habits, my, my nutrition, and even my workouts in order to be efficient and to get higher health, horsepower at a molecular level. So as someone who has been able to maintain, again, so glad you outed yourself, but to have the extraordinary strength and the endurance and the well-being and the health that you have into your 60s, what were some of the key strategies that you use for bio-optimization? Well, again, because I was fortunate to, to have a life since 10 years old, of focus on exercise. And again, the exercise is about stress adaptation. It's not about going to do the same routine in the same way every single time you go to the gym or wherever you're getting your exercise. We have to understand how our bodies adapt to stress and it's the, it's the adaptation to stress that forges us ahead to stimulate growth and, and continued strengthening because you know, people often say, oh, I just want to maintain, you know, I'm in my place. I just want to maintain. Maintenance doesn't exist. You're either growing or you're degenerating. There's no third direction. So the idea of using exercise as a way to constantly stress the body and adapt to those stresses is what continually strengthens us in all of our systems in the body. So that as a concept is very, very important. And everybody can do that. But you must understand that you need to force your body to do something it is not accustomed to to get that stress adaptation. In this modern world, one of the worst things that's happened is that we've been fixated on making our lives more convenient. And the more convenient we've been making our lives, the worse it's been. And I think the invention of the TV remote is probably like the first 
nail in the bag there because I used to be my dad's remote. You know, he'd say, son, go change you know, one of the six or seven channels we have. And, oh, by the way, stand over by the TV so the antennas can pick up the signal well so I can watch the ball game. And, yeah. um, you know, but think about the conveniences of our modern life. You know, the more convenient life has gotten, the, the, the sicker and unhealthier we've gotten, more sedentary. We need to move. We're made to move. Movement is so much of what propels our health and keeps it going. So, you know, it's so important to um, understand, you know, those pieces and how nutrition from the foods we eat, which we can't take for granted anymore. We can't just take for granted that even eating clean at our best effort has to really be looked at a lot close, more closely because the commercialized food industry, unfortunately, is really working against us on many, many levels. And I don't want to get into the whole conspiracy of how that cross promotes other likewise industries that, that are also unfortunately making money when we're sick and not when we're well. So it just requires us to become our own doctors, to get into our own self-care instead of rely on health care. And that requires education and a commitment. And like we said before, a choice to make certain things part of your lifestyle. You know, just to talk about very quickly detox, you know, there's a lot of you know, things out there with detox, it's gotten more popular, you know, five day water fast, three day, 12 day, you know, juice fast, um, intermittent fasting. For me, detox shouldn't be thought of as a finite thing, but as a daily thing. We need to do things on a daily basis to help remove those toxic obstacles to our body's health so we can assist our body in doing its best detox. Our body has processes, but when it's so overwhelmed by so much toxicity in our environment, it's very difficult for it to work. So we have to be deliberate about that. Um, there's a lot of nutritional pieces to that. Speaking of nutrition too, not all of us process nutrients the same way. We have genetic differentiations that prevent certain parts of us to, to convert certain raw materials or nutrients from food or even supplements we're taking into the forms that the body can actually use. So you can actually be taking the best supplements, Ted, but you have certain genetic mutations that you inherited from one or both parents, and that's inhibiting your ability to actually turn those nutrients usable into the cell where you can actually get that cell functioning at that high level with the nutrients you need. But the cool part is that you can identify, you can test and find out what am I not methylating properly because that's how we convert those raw materials by methylation. And so you can look at that. Unfortunately, our pediatricians don't test us when we're you know, young and first seeing them because that nutritional patterning is going to affect the entire lives. If you don't have the nutrients, we can't make hormones properly. We can't make testosterone. We can't make growth hormone. We can't make you know, thyroid and all the other things that we need to function, enzymes, amino acids, you know, proteins, B vitamins, serotonin, dopamine, all the things that our body just needs to function optimally at the cell level has to be guided by the proper nutrients. But when we have a world where many of us are, are lacking that ability to convert, we need to identify that so then we can modify how we supplement and be able to you know, work around those things so we can make the things we need to. The one other thing we put alongside of that is micronutrient testing, where we're looking not in the bloodstream at nutrients, but actually inside the cell, because it's in the cell where nutrients are doing the work. And you could actually have a false reading. You could look and say, oh, wow, all my vitamins in my bloodstream are in a normal range. Yeah, my vitamin D is great. But then you could turn around the very same day and you can do an intracellular uh, test and find that you're, you're highly deficient. So micronutrient intracellular testing is another way for an individual to really gain control of the proper nutrients and the forms they need to be in to start optimizing and gaining back the health that maybe the first 30 or 40 years of your life started to dwindle and because of these deficiencies that just have become chronic in you. How would one go about um, taking a micronutrient in their cellular test? Uh, what, would, what steps would we take? You mentioned if I go to my general physician and I say, hey, can I get this test? Typically, they're going to look at me crazy or say, no, you're fine. Um, well, I'm never going to forget when I, I was 27 years old and I had some knee pain and the physician told me, oh, you're just getting old. Maybe take aspirin. At in my head, I'm like, how? <laughs> at 27, I should take aspirin for the rest of my life. It didn't add up. So I was able to kind of look at that crooked and say, OK, something's going on here. But 
for for a lot of our listeners who are um their their best advocate for their health and they want to take their health into their own hands what would testing or starting the process of testing look like yeah that's a great question so obviously for my patients who are here in my office i'm able to send them to, to this lab which actually works nationally but happens to be a 12 minute drive from my office so we're able to send them in there for a blood draw however i've also i've often been able to drop ship these test kits to um, people all over the country get them to go just to a local lab. There's a, a lab chain called um, Any Lab, which will take that and do the blood and send it right back to the lab here. And then they're able to get the results of those reports and through a consultation, take a look at not only the results, but also have a whole consult and go through, like, what are your symptoms? What do you, are you having trouble sleeping? Are you having trouble putting on muscle? Um, you know, do you have frequency going to urinate you know, in, in the evening, you know, when you're sleeping? All those things are looked at. And then from the symptoms and the results of the testing, a custom supplement blend is created for you to start taking to start address all those things where you're deficient and not converting properly to start getting back to giving your body all those nutrients that it needs to just make the things that it needs to function optimally. So it's a really simple process. and. Um, Again, anybody that's interested, you can uh, reach out to me directly. Directly, um, we have the contact information, and it's it's very simple, um, but it's very very impactful. We we really haven't been brought up understanding how nutrients, a lack of nutrients, just impacts our health. You know, we've just kind of taken that um, for granted, unfortunately. Yeah, no, absolutely. And I'll be sure to make sure to give an opportunity at the end of the episode for that contact information for folks to connect with you and, and, and get that test because it all, it all starts with one step. And I've, I've related health in the later years as an endurance race. Everyone starts from the starting line. And some people, uh, you know, when I laugh about friends that have peaked in high school, they were the star athlete and they looked great. And unfortunately now in their thirties, they have a beer gut and they don't really do much, right? They, they, they sprinted off the blocks, but as you get past your twenties and into your thirties and into your forties, you really see who was pacing themselves and who was running that race. And something you said, Dr. Littman, about daily detox. I love that because a lot of what I've implemented in my life were routines and habits for health. Not something I do in a 30-day challenge, not something I do seasonally. It's what do I do day in and day out? Just finish a workout. I had my protein shake with creatine and I'm sitting outside getting some vitamin D from some natural sunlight while I'm drinking my protein shake, making sure that I can have that as a habit because sunlight is very important to me in my daily routine. I'm sitting outside next to my ice barrel. I remember when I got it, my wife couldn't fathom why I would sit in a <laughs> barrel of freezing cold water, yeah. but I've actually gotten her to do it at 55 degrees, which is a huge win for me because now yes. she's doing it with me. Um, in, in the dog days of summer, on a 99 degree day, it's easy to convince your wife to get into ice cold water. I'll return <laughs> and let you know how that works in the winter. If iron sharpens iron, so does one man sharpen another. But if you're a man and you're alone or listening to this, then who sharpens you? What's going on, guys? Ted Thayton here, host of the Modern Man Podcast, also founder of the Noble Knights Mastermind Group. And I'm just out here encouraging you to find your circle. Maybe you're on a personal growth journey and nobody around you understands the new mentality that you're possessing. That's okay. You can find an online community that will pour into you, will navigate your goals and navigate your obstacles, share their experiences, resources, and more. Join the Noble Knights Mastermind Group and try us out for free to tap into a community of men helping each other scale up and reach their goals. Check out the themodernmanpodcast.com. But when you have someone listening and if they're in their 20s, their 30s, their 40s, or their 50s, right? That first step of taking the test. Is it ever too late? What do you say to the 50-year-old who has all these aches and pains? Can they turn that ship around? Oh, absolutely. I mean, the cool part is that, you know, because of the magic of our, you know, I'm not going to call it magic, the miracle of our creation as human bodies and human vessels and the, the way our systems work, give it what it needs as long as you're living and breathing and it will work for you. It's just, again, once you kind of flip that switch in your head, if you haven't been living this way and you really want to dedicate yourself to really, you know, bio-optimizing yourself. I don't know if you're going to live longer, but you're certainly going to feel better while you're here. 
And, you know, it's so impactful on not only you, but the people around you, how you walk around feeling. And, you know, for me, you know, I have four grown children, but, you know, I didn't want to be a sideline dad when they were younger and they were active and they were doing things. I wanted to be right there with them. You know, now I'm, I'm doing that with my grandkids, you know, so I'm able to still have that same level. And, you know, what's a blessing to me, Ted, and I never shoved it down their throats, but all my kids knew, okay, dad works out, dad eats this way. And every one of them has followed suit in their own way, figuring out what, how that integrates into their life. You know, they, they all exercise, they all work out, they all eat very mindfully. And, you know, it makes me glad that I was able to pass that down as an example, you know, as a father leading their, their family in that way, because now more than ever, that is probably the most important thing that we can do on a daily basis, because everything else doesn't even matter at that point. If you're not feeling and functioning you know, your best, your life is not going to be the kind of quality that it can be. Forget finances and all you know those kinds of things. But just walking around with energy every day, feeling great is the greatest reward. And so, you know, for me, I'm, I'm just grateful that I took to it so young and that I've been in a, a field of, you know, courses of study where I'm able to learn more and more about every day that coming out with new things, what we could do. You mentioned cold plunging. Cold plunging is a great example of one simple thing people could do each and every day to tap into that physiological response to cold as mammals that we have in us. You know, we all, in these modern world, we're, we're living in controlled environments, you know, our temperature's controlled and all that. But before that happened, we were living out in the elements. And guess what? We were created with this great innate ability to adapt to that and become stronger because of it. Stress adaptation, stress adaptation. So if our modern life doesn't provide that naturally or culturally, we have to start integrating that. So cold therapy is a great way. You mentioned sunlight. Sunlight's so important. We have something called the superhuman protocol here in the office, which combines a pulsed electromagnetic field, which is what we get from the earth to help our own plus and minus charges just be optimized. Oxygen, we have that as step two. And of course, deep breathing outside is so important to get to saturate your tissues with oxygen every day and then sunlight and light to drive that oxygen into the cell to guess what bio-optimize the energy production of that cell that's what the superhuman protocol does here but it's taking three things from creation puts them together in a sequence and makes that happen so if i can encourage guys to do anything is to get outside most of our time as kids, we spend 90% of our time outside, you know, riding our bike and playing sports. Now as adults, we're spending 90% of our time inside. We have to flip-flop that and be very deliberate and, you know, in, in, um, intentional about making that a daily practice. It sounds like you've already done that. I love that you have the cold plunge at home. Um, I love that your wife's doing it with you. It's, it's a great way to, again, just... Um, thwart off a lot of the ills that this modern world will be giving you, inflammation, a lot of the, you know, the knee pain that you're supposed to be taking aspirin for <laughs> for the rest of your life, I love that. Um, just getting into the cold plunge and being able to get your body to, to react to that cold and, you know, stimulate, you know, stimulate growth hormones, stimulate testosterone, stimulate your immune system to, to be able to do that. So we just have to be willing to invest and see health as an investment, not at an expense. Yeah, absolutely. And and to your point of leadership, I think my wife saw me do it enough times and just being the crazy one in the household, <laughs> that crazy starting to leak a little bit and she's getting the bug. She even goes to the gym. She'll sit in the sauna and, and things like that. And my six month old daughter has laughed at daddy's pain plenty of times during a workout. <laughs> so uh, I hope to set that same exam example as you. Put her on your back and do push ups. I did that with all my kids. <laughs> Oh, that's fantastic. I, I Right now, I do, um, she loves the curls. I'll do sets of 10 curls mm -hmm. and then 10 shoulder presses and do that three times for a quick little burner. Mm -hmm. And she giggles because she just loves the elevation change. I'm going to have to add the push-ups on the back when she's yep. able to And then when, when she's a little bigger and she can hang on to you, do pull-ups with her hanging off your waist. That's another thing I used to do. <laughs> this is going to be a and lot Brian of fun. And by the they're going to want to start doing it themselves, so you'll see. Uh, and that's that's what about leading by example and, and and living that healthy lifestyle. And we always say, you know, our, our kids are going to emulate what we do, not do what we say. So right. I, I love being that example in that activity. 
Um, I, I do want to touch on chiropractic care and how that contribute to long-term health and well-being because I, I was one where the first chiropractor I saw was in high school. I was playing football. Um, again, 135 pounds soaking wet, had no business going up against a 220 linebacker, six foot two, but I did because uh, I'm stubborn and had a twinge, a t- tweak in my back and it, and it hurt. That's the first time I sat down with a chiropractor, found out I had scoliosis, started seeing chiropractic care. Years later, uh, <laughs> I'll, I'll tell on myself, tell on this story in public, without seeing chiropractic care consistently, as a relatively healthy, young, 23, 24-year-old, I sneezed in the shower, Dr. Lippman, mm-hmm. and that put, it was one of the, mm-hmm. can't breathe, yep. and put me out of commission, had to see chiropractic care again. And then as I started sitting with these chiropractors who had more of a holistic approach, teaching me the benefits of the spine and how the body can heal itself when it's properly aligned, really opened up my eyes to the importance of just the continuous care. So I would love to touch on how chiropractic care can contribute to that long-term health and well-being beyond just the pain relief. Yeah, that's great. Um, Chiropractic, when it was first um, in modern times, because they did manipulation of spine back in ancient Greece and ancient Rome, I think um, in some of the Asian cultures, it you know, had been documented, they've seen, because they realized then and certainly now that the way the body interacts and all our parts are connected, you know, our nervous system that runs everything is coming from our brain down through our spinal cord, which of course is housed in our spine. And all the nerve roots that come out between each of those vertebrae go to all the places in our back, our muscles, and you know, run run everything, our organs. So any disruption in those electrical systems, those pathways, because again, we have such a close proximity between the structural um, pieces of the spine and the functional aspect of the nervous system coming through that and giving nerve energy to everything that needs it. There's an opportunity from a structural standpoint to be disruptions in those flowing chains of neurological energy, blood flow. And of course, our spines don't exist in a vacuum. We also have extremities, you know, our arms and legs and our hands and feet. All of those are composite parts of this whole interactive mechanical system. And everything in the body affects everything. So chiropractic for me, has become chirofusion, meaning that we have integrated different modalities for the purpose of getting optimal weight bearing and mobility in all of our joints, spinal and otherwise, so that we have the full flow of neurological energy, blood flow circulation. Because remember a few years ago, they said sitting's the new smoking. And part of the, the reason they came out with that report is they realized that cardiovascular risk skyrockets when somebody's sitting sedentary all day because blood starts to pull, circulation's impaired, and you can't detox the body properly. You can't get oxygen and nutrients to the cells properly. You can't remove the waste products from cell metabolism if things aren't flowing and moving. So chiropractic as a practice for me is not just about adjusting the spine, but adjusting all joints that have become dysfunctional, as well as breaking up fascial adhesions, muscular and fascial adhesions, you know, knots and trigger points in the muscle that otherwise will start to restrict mobility. And when you restrict mobility, you're restricting neurological flow, you're restricting blood flow. And again, you're, you're going more towards a dis-ease situation in the body instead of an optimized situation where the body, again, is allowed to do its best work. So chiropractic really was developed not to treat back pain, but to help optimize all those systems. The reason it's associated with musculoskeletal pain is like in the 70s, they started to try to get insurance companies to cover it. And the only way they came up with is to create diagnosis codes for musculoskeletal pain because there were studies that showed that chiropractic care was effective you know, clinically for low back pain. So that's where that whole mentality started. But it goes so much beyond just musculoskeletal pain. Now, that being said, look at somebody that's sedentary now. You can guarantee, in, you know, the time they're in their 60s, 70s, or certainly their 80s, they want to go out to a restaurant, guess what? They need a walker and maybe have an oxygen tank. So yeah. is that the way you want to end up? Or are you willing to do things daily 
including chiropractic care, as a maintenance and a bio-optimization component because, you know, we, we do that with our teeth. We're, we're brought up saying, okay, you got to go to the dentist. you got to get them cleaned every three to six months. you got to get checkups. Well, that hasn't built in, has not been built into our society with chiropractic in the same way. You know, we're like spinal dentists. You know, we, we are there to keep things moving and getting all those things flowing. So chiropractic has been something I've been doing since I'm 19. And, you know, into my 60s now is something that's a, a, a staple of everything else that I do as part of my preventive and proactive, you know, healthcare planning for myself. Yeah, no, absolutely. And, and to your point, I, I've heard a lot of folks say, oh, my, my back hurts and, and, and I got to go see a chiropractor and they go because of the pain. But back right. to that 24 year old Ted sneezing in the shower, throwing his back out, as I've discovered, something was wrong long before the pain came into play. And oftentimes it's the pain that is the last sign of something being wrong. So anyone who's listening, thinking that they're comfortable, they're fine, you could still have something wrong. It just hasn't completely flared and waved its attention to you yet. Yeah, you haven't sneezed yet. You haven't bent down to put on your sock and all of a sudden you can't straighten up. You know how many people have come into my office bending over to put on a sock or a pant leg and then they can't straighten up and they think it was that act that did it. But as you just pointed out, that dysfunctional mechanical problem had been there, just been, you know, asymptomatic. It wasn't that proverbial straw that breaks the camel's back that happened until they did some meaningless everyday task. And that's the thing that threw them, you know, over that edge because they're, they were just at that threshold, you know, mechanically um, before that last thing just took them over the edge. And so I also like to mention to people, the best thing to do when you get injured get to somebody right away. Don't let it wait and think, oh, it's going to get better on its own. Because the quicker you can get that correction, the quicker the body's going to get the message that, hey, I'm not injured. I'm moving properly. As opposed to saying, oh, I'm injured now. I got to compensate. I got to tighten this up. I got to start offloading this side of my body. Don't let your body do that. Get back to activity and dictate to the body that, no, I'm not injured. I'm walking through this. We're going to get this thing back to normal, you know, like that. Because that's the way you're really going to get back that quickly. Motion is lotion, baby. Motion yes. is lotion. <laughs> and it's funny. I've been doing, um, I wrote out a new workout plan after our daughter was born. And my wife was doing it with me. And one of the workouts were single hand dumbbell snatches. And mm -hmm. she's like, why are we doing these single hand dumbbell snatches? And I said, because do you know how many times I'm holding Savannah and she drops the passy and I have to squat down with one hand and mm -hmm. pick it up? <laughs> that's a functional that exercise. <laughs> exactly. When, when did you notice or when did you become aware of the, the potential impact and the influence that this could have on, on people's lives? You mentioned 19, discovering chiropractic, discovering that your neck was broken. But I imagine back to the, uh, the endurance race analogy, right? As, as I look left and I look right in my 30s and, and approaching my 40s, I could see that you know, some are taking care of themselves, some are not. So my eyes are just now being opened up to, okay, what I'm doing is, is probably working and let me pay more attention to this and find out how I can fine tune this so I can keep my pace going. When did you recognize that you were onto something? I would say probably, and, and it really gets brought out. I'd gone to my first, I went to my 10 year, 20 year, 30 year and 40 year high school reunion. And it's a very interesting thing to, to be 18 with everybody and then to be 28 with everybody and then 38 with everybody and then 48 with everybody and then 58 with everybody. There's a huge differential when you look across that spectrum from the kids you grew up with and then see them each decade later. And it was very obvious to me who had been investing in themselves and who has not been. Now, alongside of that, through my last 40 years of, of doing what I'm doing as a chiropractic physician, you know, I started out, I was in my late 20s. And, you know, many of the people I was seeing were my contemporaries or maybe a little bit older or even in their 50s, that kind of thing. And as time's gone on, and I'm on the other end, taking care of 20 and 30 and 40 and 50 year olds, people that are, you know, 10, 20, 30, 40 years younger than me. I'm seeing a broad spectrum of how badly and poorly so many people are aging because 
the modern life we're living is working so much against them. And because I think that I started at such a young age to incorporate things that were going to continually, you know, stress out of me, give me the, the nutrients and the proper nutrition to, to feed my body what it needs to, to, you know, flourish and to continue to, you know, to grow and be strong and have that mentality. I, I would see that that comparison over those last 40 years, looking at other people, you know, who were in their 20s with me at the time. And then what happened when we were in their 30s? And then what happened when we were in their 40s? You know, many patients have been with me for a very long time. And I've seen how people, you know, and, and it's funny because people say to me, and believe me, I'm not patting myself on the back about it. I'm, I'm grateful to, to have found and, and invested in this. People that haven't seen me for six months, they say, okay, how is it that you look younger today than you did six months ago? And I said, well, I'm superhuman and I'm youthing instead of aging. But you youth it, what does that even mean? I said, well, I don't believe in anti-aging because there's a negative spin on that. I believe in youthing, meaning I want to promote regeneration in my body as opposed to just manage that degeneration. And once you understand what that means and you're willing to embrace that, your body will do the rest. So I've noticed along the way, just looking at my peers, people that were older than me when I was younger, and now the people that are younger than me that, that I'm older. So I've been able to see for 40 years and observe the differences in how the, the lifestyle that I've been so involved in and inspired from such a young age has impacted me as in comparison to you know, my peers that I grew up with. And then, of course, people that I've been you know seeing thousands of people over the last you know, 40 years now. Yeah, no, absolutely. As you as you mentioned, just like your company, physical evidence, and 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 you see it day in day out. Yeah. Um, coming to the end here, what is uh, one piece of advice that you could give to the men listening or watching uh, to optimize their health and longevity today? To start in the right direction. Yeah, get the concept of stressing your body and doing things that are difficult and doing things that are not comfortable and accustomed to. That is going to get your body to actually start certain physiological processes that are going to put you into this growth and regenerative mode. Even something as simple as if you're writing, go ahead and shave and brush your teeth with your left hand. Go try that. Neurologically, that's going to stimulate changes in your brain that are going to be very, very effective. The other thing is and most of us just don't get enough oxygen. We also, a lot of people don't realize that the air quality inside our homes is actually worse than on the outside. So we're up against not only the air from the outside that might have detriment, but also, you know, dust and dust mites and molds and all these other things. So get outside and do some Wim Hof breathing. Wim Hof has, you know, been very famous now for teaching us how to get deep breathing going and, and change the partial pressure of oxygen, meaning to actually increase the oxygen pressure coming into our bodies so we can really saturate our tissues because oxygen is essential at being able to get the needed energy at that cell level to that 34 horsepower. So deep breathing, if you have access to cold therapy, absolutely get involved with that because that's gonna stimulate you know, this mammalian part of us that gets white fat out, brings brown fat in. Brown fat's a much higher metabolic tissue, provides much more better energy for us, but also doing that deep breathing because you're able to get, again, that cellular function up. And you do that for a month, getting your feet barefoot on the ground too outside in the process of all that is going to get you that grounding because all this electricity and wireless and Bluetooth around us is causing these very harmful electromagnetic fields that are interrupting our own polarity and interrupting our ability to, to function at the cell level too. So these little things, just getting back outside into nature, doing deep breathing, some cold therapy is something that could turn yourself around so quickly in a, in a very short period of time to start to feel so much better than you have, you know, for maybe many, many years. Absolutely. And I can attest to some of those practices uh, as uh, as one who does those myself. So, um, doc, Dr. Lippman, 42 minutes is not enough time to tap into your knowledge. So I don't want to uh, rob our listeners of having the opportunity to connect with you, follow you, and and get some of the resources that you offer. So what are some of the best ways that listeners can find more of your work and get in contact with Physical Evidence? Well, physicalevidenceconnect.com is where you can get directly to a form filled, give me your information and ask me any question, provide any scenario, something you've been challenged with. And depending on what those things are, I might 
find a resource that's local to you, because I, I often do that, or some of the things that I'm able to offer, you know, remotely can be helpful too, or sometimes both. Um, when it comes to the chiropractic, I have a very definite idea about what I consider to be effective and, and not effective. And so I do have some resources where I can find somebody nearby that might be able to help you with something that nobody else is doing, because I can't tell you how much I'm the last resort for a lot of people. So please reach out. Um, I'm happy to do that for you just so I can be that resource for you. And um, Boca Raton Chiropractor is our Instagram um, handle. Um, it's also a TikTok. Don't go to TikTok because my girl makes me do these stupid dances and I'm not a good dancer. So <laughs> go to Instagram. It's it's more information and you might see some of those stupid dances there anyway. She tells me it's a good thing. But um, <laughs> physicalevidencechiropractic.com is also our website. You can see some of the services, modalities and biohacks that we offer here to you know make us not just a chiropractic office, but you know a biooptimization center. Fantastic. And I'll have those links in the show notes for folks and in the description, if you're watching on YouTube, just, just uh, open that up and get directly to those resources. Uh, last question, Dr. Lippman, it's usually the one I save last because it's the heaviest. Um, and if we've touched on it already, that's okay. But what is something you've seen or experienced that shapes the way you view the world as a man? Well, it's actually a very easy question to answer. You know, being in my, my age category, when I grew up, men were men and women were women. And the idea of men being men and women being women is as natural as the fact that we exist. You know, we were created both men and, and, and women. I mean, that's the way it is. And so what that means to me is that we have certain traits and characteristics as men that are natural to us. We were created for certain things, ways of thinking, tasks, and ways of being. We're made to be leaders. We're made to be um, leader in the sense of not dominating as much as, you know, leading by example. And, you know, if you're a house, you know, if you're a husband and wife and you're a father, you know, you are the leader of the household. But your mom, the, the wife is being created to be not our helper, but our, our co-partner, you know, co-pilot here because the, the, the traits that women have are so unique to them. And just like men are, have unique traits. But when you put that together, you have really an awesome full spectrum of, I think, what we were all intended to be. But men need to be men. We can't let society and culture, as it's been doing for the last 50, 60 years, trying to say that, you know, being a man is toxic, um, you know, all the negative parts of that. We have to embrace the parts that we are as men and, and be those leaders, you know, but we have to be everybody's hero. We, we need to be you know, the hero. We need to be worthy of, you know, of being heroes to our kids, to our families, and to our communities. We, we need to set examples because unfortunately the world, as you know, Ted, that we live in today is all upside down. And it's taking us so far away of what we were created to be that I think so many people are lost because of it. Because how can you make sense of some of the things that are going on today? You can't. I mean, that's a whole yeah. other conversation, really, isn't it? Yeah, maybe uh, another podcast to be had, but so true. Such a, a, a noble aim for us as men to be the full versions of the selves that we know we can be. And that's really what this podcast is all about. I'm just me looking at becoming the best man that I can be. And that's why I invite experts like yourself and, and others to share these conversations and share it with the world. So through osmosis and, and through just dumb luck, mm -hmm. someone else could hear our words maybe see the example that we set and follow suit so we could echo that that more so and across the country so dr david Littman, thank you so much for being on the podcast owner of physical evidence seasoned chiropractic physician with a deep personal commitment to bio optimization it's been an absolute pleasure having you on thank you Ted. It's a pleasure to be here nice speaking with you too Absolutely. Really quick, I'm going to share a couple nuggets that you left along the way. And I'll be honest, I almost ran out of areas to write my notes. There were so many, but yeah. didn't want to become a victim. First and foremost, men listening, we say it over and over again, you're either the victim or the victor. Don't be the victim, be the victor of your life, of your story. Food makes us strong. What does your diet look like? And beyond just the food you eat, the music you listen to, the books you read, your diet is what you consume. And if you're consuming trash, you're going to produce trash. Broken neck and didn't know it. Unfortunately, that's a lot of people listening to this. You might have a broken neck and not know it. Again, as we mentioned, pain is the last sign 
of something being wrong when it shows up in the body. So maybe address those issues before they become that check engine light that shows up on your car, which unfortunately too many people ignore for way too long. Health of the basic form of our function, our cells, understanding that our cells can only work at two horsepower. But how do we get our cells to operate at 30 horsepower, if not more? Systems of cell energy. The exercise is just stress adaptation, something we should introduce into our lives for that growth. And maintenance does not exist. If you're saying, I just want to maintain, it does not exist. You're either growing or you're atrophy. It's up or down, and that's the only way it is. Daily detox is not something you do for a 30-day challenge. It's not something you do seasonal. Sure, you have a wedding coming up. You want to make that wedding date look good in your tux, but here's the thing. You need a lifestyle. Micronutrient intercellular testing, the first step you can take. Again, reach out to Dr. David Littman to get a baseline picture of where you are, and then you can establish where you're trying to go. And then Give the body what it needs so that it will work for you. You just need to help the body get out of its own way. That's what you need to do here. And then cardiovascular risk increases when you're sedentary. So many people have that lifestyle where they work in a seated area for eight hours. So change that process. Correct an injury right away. Do not wait. Get uncomfortable and get oxygen. Guys, thank you so much for making it to the end. You already know I'm going to ask that you hit that like button, hit that subscribe button so you can get a new episode each and every single week. And of course, as we always say at the end of the episode, everybody wants the sunshine, but they don't want the rain, but you can't get the pleasure without first the pain. Let's grow. Amen.